Today, we got more angles of Nuglin's first booster landing along with comments from Blue Origin. One video shows how far off to the side the booster is before it moves over the Jacklin barge and comes in for a landing. The other is the full booster onboard footage during its final descent. We also got confirmation that the two Escapade spacecraft are working and have established contact with teams on the ground. Here I'll go more in depth into the new booster videos, features of its landing, the NG-2 mission, and more. One of the newest angles, which was posted by Jeff Bezos, shows the final landing maneuver of Nuklin's booster. It starts as Nuklin pierces through the clouds with three of its BE-4 engines already lit. From here, it continues to descend toward the water, angled to the left. At only a few hundred meters in the air, it then begins practically hovering and very slowly moving toward the barge. By the time the booster is finally over the ship, it's likely only around 50 meters high. It aligns itself in the center of Jacklin and descends the final bit before making an extremely soft touchdown. Looking again at the initial entry angle, it's clear Blue Origin wanted the rocket to slow down and ensure it was under control before moving toward the barge. Jeff Bezos confirmed this in a comment saying, We nominally target a few hundred feet away from Jacklin to avoid a severe impact if engines fail to start or start slowly. We'll incrementally reduce that conservatism over time, he said. In other words, with this being only the second New Glenn booster landing attempt, Blue Origin would rather use extra propellant and start the landing off to the side than risk damaging the ship and delaying future launches or recovery attempts. Based on that comment, we can also expect to see something similar on at least a few more future booster landings. If we pair this new angle and look back at the onboard footage and telemetry, it also showcases how unique this landing was. Right around the start of engine ignition, the booster is traveling nearly 600 miles per hour or 965 kilometers an hour and is 7,000 feet or 2,100 meters high. Engine ignition also starts at T plus 8 minutes and 31 seconds. Immediately after, the stage begins slowing pretty significantly before entering the clouds. This would be right around when the new angle starts. Staying with the onboard footage, close to 100 meters high, the landing legs are then deployed. While the live stream isn't the clearest, you get a few seconds of video showing these legs start to extend. You'll notice that they don't deploy extremely quickly, but come out at a reasonable pace. For a better idea, we can look at the past landing leg tests Blue Origin completed before the mission. In this example, it takes about 8 seconds from the start of the deploy to all 6 landing legs being locked in place and ready to take the weight of the booster. Even though it's not very fast, given New Glenn's landing pace in general, they have plenty of time for the legs to deploy. When the live stream cuts to a camera on Jacqueline in the final moments, you can see how slowly New Glenn touches down. On the other new video they shared, while a bit choppy, we get uninterrupted views from the onboard camera. This video starts about a minute before landing burn engine ignition. It lights the engines and passes through the clouds. We then get an angle of the landing legs deploying. As it gets close to the surface, its exhaust sprays huge amounts of water onto the landing vessel before coming in for a landing. Looking at the clock, the engine burn started at T plus 8 minutes and 31 seconds and ended at T plus 9 minutes and 16 seconds. That's 45 seconds straight of initially three BE-4 engines firing before transitioning to just one. In theory, the shorter the landing burn and the less propellant needed, the greater Nuklin's payload mass is. That being said, based on comments from the company and the video we've seen, this landing was far from the most efficient trajectory. Bezos even mentioned incrementally reducing conservatism over time. This means we can expect shorter and slightly more aggressive landing burns on future flights, which in turn should provide more initial launch capability. Something else people noticed were these flashes of light and smoke on the landing legs after touching down. You can see this effect on each of the individual legs. This is actually a mechanism that welds the legs to the barge to provide stability and control in the open ocean. Back in 2024, Blue Origin filed a patent for what they described as bonding objects using energetic welding. The patent is quoted saying, a bonding device carried by at least one of the landing support elements and configured to form a bond between the bonding device and the landing surface. The bond may include a weld. A further system includes a bonding device with an energetic material and an anchor element. It seems like this type of system is being used immediately after the booster touches down on the landing vessel. So far, from what we've seen, the booster has stayed upright and is in good condition. Not long after the landing, we got images from the company showing the booster on the barge in the night. They then posted a close-up of the booster this morning. Besides the obvious, which is that it's still standing, it looks to be in great physical condition. The landing legs, strakes, fins are all intact and the booster barely has any charring on it at all. This likely has to do with two main reasons. For one, the BE-4 engine uses liquid oxygen and liquefied natural gas, or LNG, which is cleaner burning than most traditional kerosene burning engines. Also, all the brown you see covering the aft section, strakes, fins, and inner stage is a thermal protection system named Comet. Originally, Blue Origin was planning to paint these areas, but they decided to just leave them as is, saving time and weight. While they look just about the same as when they launched, this could change in the future. In the past, Blue Origin CEO Dave Limp was quoted saying, 
Given the thermal environment, we expect the material will change colors on our booster as we fly multiple missions. With that in mind, after a few more flights, we could see something different. One of the last images shared by the company is a close-up of the booster right after lifting off. Those seven BE-4 engines are meant for reusability, and now we're back in the hands of Blue Origin, meaning the company can determine exactly how well they held up and the refurbishment process needed before the next launch. Currently, the next new blend launch could be as soon as January 2026, so only a few months away. There have been reports that Blue Origin wanted to refurbish the booster we just saw land and use it for the third flight. That turnaround would be extremely ambitious, but it's something to keep an eye on. After the mission, Dave Lemp mentioned, We achieved full mission success today, and I am proud of the team. It turns out Never Tell Me The Odds had perfect odds. Never before in history has a booster this large nailed the landing on the second try. This is just the beginning as we rapidly scale our flight cadence and continue delivering for our customers, he said. The acting NASA administrator, Sean Duffy, commented, Congratulations to Blue Origin, Rocket Lab, UC Berkeley, and all of our partners on the successful launch of Escapade. This heliophysics mission will help reveal how Mars became a desert planet and how solar eruptions affect the Martian surface. Every launch of New Glenn provides data that will be essential when we launch Mark 1 through Artemis. Looking at the payloads, so far they seem to be in good shape. Rocket Lab tweeted, The twins are talking. We have successfully established contact with both Escapade spacecraft, Blue, and Gold. As for the other payload, which was attached to the second stage, the Viasat Halo Net demonstration successfully executed the first flight test of Viasat's telemetry data relay service for NASA's communication services project. In a statement, Blue Origin said, New Glenn is foundational to advancing our customers' critical missions and our own. The vehicle underpins our efforts to establish sustained human presence on the moon, harness in-space resources, provide multi-mission, multi-orbit mobility through Blue Ring, and establish destinations in low Earth orbit. The New Glenn program has several vehicles in production and multiple years of orders. In addition to NASA and Viasat, customers include Amazon's Project Kuiper, AST Space Mobile, and several telecommunications providers, among others. The mission marked the vehicle's second National Security Space Launch or NSSL certification flight. Blue Origin is certifying New Glenn with the U.S. Space Force for the NSSL program to meet emerging national security objectives. In one final quote, they pointed out, Today was a tremendous achievement for the New Glenn team opening a new era for Blue Origin and the industry as we look to launch, land, repeat, again and again. We've made significant progress on manufacturing at rate and building ahead of need. Our primary focus remains on increasing our cadence and working through our manifest. At this point, the company will be working to get the booster back into its facility and start assessing its condition. They should get a lot of invaluable data, not only during the flight, but also now that they have the physical hardware back on land. In the coming days and week, we could get additional videos and information from the company regarding the landing and the mission as a whole. For the first time, Blue Origin managed to successfully land New Glenn's booster. With this being only the second attempt, the company had a conservative landing trajectory to place the booster over the water initially rather than the landing barge. Something that's expected to change in future missions as they get more comfortable. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.